Hey guys, this is Quicksilver Gaming bringing you another Warno battle report. This is a 1v1 against a very hard AI. I'm once again playing the 39th Moto Stroke, Moto Strokey Guards, and uh, this time we're against 1180 French Para uh, Para Division. So that'll be pretty fun. This is once again me just showing off. Well, not really showing off at all. I'm pretty terrible but just going over the development of um, me as a player learning this game and getting back into YouTube so I'm really really liking the did I call them yeah 39 motostrophy guard so I didn't name them right um, just getting a hang of how to deploy forces at the beginning how to properly move my forces up uh, probably a little bit too aggressive with this helo but I think I am pulling it back in time I think I spotted that these mistrals were moving up and I didn't want my helo to get killed because that's something that I've been really bad about is just having my helicopters get taken out way too early. Now 11E really good for deployment as far as I understand and you can see just absolutely spamming mistrals. As I was saying though this is part of my development as a player that a, a aircraft a little too far out, but we didn't get punished, which really good. Need to float it in the back line about here uh, to protect the helo. Thankfully, I've actually got my helo in a pretty good position, uh, which is not quite like me now. Any aircraft coming in, hopefully I do bring my AA around. Doesn't look like it. Looks like they're hitting us. Oh. Okay, we won the one-on-one -on -one engagement. I mean, the SU-27, pretty good. Um, we are trying to take this objective over here. So Conker's in a nice building. We have uh, some of our recce, our Razvedka over here. We spotted this. I actually don't know what the heck this little thing is. Oh, okay, yep, yeah, no. It's uh, sort of like the French version of an LAV without the infantry carrying capacity, so basically an armored car with a big ass gun on it but yeah i'm really trying to develop myself as a better player i don't plan to be you know like top tier player i'm not the best at these games but i consider myself good maybe probably like above average maybe into like below elite but somewhere in in that range especially once i get my hands on the game and play it over and over again which i think warno is one of those games that you can just practice, which I really like that you have the AI to practice against, and then you can go into ranked multiplayer, you can go into casual multiplayer. I think we're going to lose this Conquers. It really needs more support, and we don't have said support. However, did take out the ERC-90, which once again is that sort of armored car with the big giant gun in it. Let's see if I can find another ERC-90. Here's here's one. So it has a CN-90 F4, whatever that means in the French arsenal, but it's a 90 millimeter caliber weapon. And you can see, see if I can zoom in on these little, little guys. They're pretty cool looking. Uh, getting a little bit cheeky and lost that. You can see the enemy tons of mistrals and mistrals are absolutely amazing now this guy the very bad decision by the ai um i did learn i think in episode one i said where eugen gets ai right and um just makes some better versus giving him a lot of resources i i think i am wrong in that statement i believe that part of what happens when you face like very hard ai is they get extra income and extra resources to start the game. I need to dig into that a little bit deeper, but I still feel like the AI gets better, but I could be completely wrong on that. Maybe it's just the fact that they have more resources to play with. They they utilize combined arms more, but you can see here this AML, I mean, really kind of being a little bit stupid. These ERCs and AMLs running forward, not not the best idea. Now I need a logistics vehicle up here because our Conkers is out and that's really important. But I have BMP1s sort of in the back line. Um, just 
you know, taking care of anything that crosses the open field like this AML, and down it goes. So pretty good there. I think I mentioned this in the previous videos about Warno, but this replay feature is absolutely amazing because it allows me to learn the game but then re-record the video with my voiceover on top of it and show off the game while I learn the game and uh, it also helps me realize mistakes that I'm making like running this anti-aircraft uh, Su-27S right into these mistrels. Really I need to pay attention that there's mistrels over here and if I were to just push even with this BMP-1 and uh, Rosvedka the recon unit I could probably wipe these mistrels out but the problem is I don't exactly know what else is around there I just know there's mistrels but going back to the replay feature it's something that I wish more games had especially those of you that have followed the channel like an ultimate general American revolution I really wish that had a replay feature because I would really like to zoom into parts of the battlefield show off different assets uh, which is something I need to get better at on Warno is just showing off oh this vehicle's facing backwards actually don't know if I know how to face the vehicles in the correct direction but a lot of these games you play so far zoomed out because that's that's the optimal way of playing them but really you want to show off these nice little firefights uh, between vehicles between infantry in Ultimate General American Revolution, the volley fire of, you know, black powder warfare, line warfare, um, and show off the uniforms, the art assets that the developers have spent so much time putting, um, putting their effort into, and it would, you know, it's rewarding when you can zoom in on single assets and show them off like this kind over here. Um, because when you're zoomed out, it's just, you know, you can see a little, little speck there, but it's just sort of a unit card. Whereas you zoom in onto this gazelle, you can see it firing, you can hear it firing, you can see the ammunition falling off of it, and then you can see the gazelle get absolutely destroyed by an igla, which is super satisfying. Whereas if I'm actively playing this game, I can't zoom into all of this. I'm... I'm not good enough to do that. I'm not good enough to micro and macro and then zoom into these wonderful firefights. Um, AI launching smoke, very good there. But I don't know if it's really that smart getting that close to these uh, Sapieri because the Sapieri do have RPG 7s, which uh, took them out. But uh, smoking and going in is not a bad tactic. I have learned though from a couple other YouTubers, that you don't necessarily want to smoke the area that you're rushing. You want to smoke the assets that are protecting that area so that you can concentrate on destroying that area. Um, you can see here AI kind of doing their standard AI thing, um, but very good at taking out Mahilos. I've noticed that. However, Mahilo for Mirage, I think I will take that trade. Uh, I mean, obviously I would love to keep my helos around and just not lose them like that, and I need to be better about landing the helos when I'm not using them, or when I'm waiting for them to be resupplied. That being said, I feel like I'm getting a lot better at this game, obviously at, you know, going from playing medium AI, which I think anybody could beat the medium. AI as long as they're somewhat competent at real-time strategy games you can pretty much screw up your micro screw up your macro and as long as you you know push forward take objectives and don't just you know suicide your troops out you're you're pretty good what is oh this is the mi-24 I absolutely love the sound of rotary cannons just that burp kind of like the a10 cannon um, I absolutely love those noises. The noises in this game are awesome, and I love how you zoom out, the noises get less and less, but you zoom in, you can hear the individual assets. However, there is a problem with that in multiplayer that a lot of the competitive players will talk about, and it's sort of, 
uh, the audio, it's not a glitch, but just audio exploit where I could zoom into these trees, listen for a vehicle's engine, and then plot my artillery on those trees to destroy whatever asset is in those trees, which is pretty cheesy. I, I hope maybe Eugen can figure out how to limit enemy noises on the battlefield if you don't have line of sight to them. I think that would be really beneficial. But then again, I'm not a coder, so I don't know exactly how that works. A little bit of a lull in the battle right now. I'm basically just securing this area. Really, I need to get up into this building here. This is sort of the building you want to capture as the red side because you can see the you can see how much range or visual range that you get by taking this building. Um, AI bringing up their mistrals, they know that I've got a helo, or I had a helo, they probably destroyed it, but they know that I'm using helos, so getting those mistrals probably, you know, into these trees would be really good, would protect them from future helicopter attacks over here. Right now, it's a stalemate. Really need to make a push. Uh, probably, probably take the airport. That would probably be the easiest thing for me. Uh, but easy, not exactly that easy. However, it's very lightly defended. So if I were to push right now up here with tanks, some recon BMP-1s, I think we could easily get a foothold into the airport and then this fire base here as long as it's supplied could really help out any count uh, stopping any counter attack but we have the forces to do it i don't like how far forward i have flown that and it dies so that was a that was a bad mistake on my part however maybe this missile will take out the mistral and it does Ooh, but one mistral which i think is probably 80 points or so. I don't know if I can see where the point values are for units in the game like this, but that was not a good trade whatsoever. Um, but we are pushing up a little bit here. I like that we are trying to get a little bit better of a foothold. We've got our Igla there. Um, BMP with decent line of sight over there. This BMP probably needs to move up to maybe this tree line over here. And that would be really beneficial and we could probably do some damage but we probably need more forces we do have this Sturm over here but that's out of position we do have a command t80 moving up but it's moving up a little bit too far really i would like that Sturm to probably be about here maybe move a bmp out there move another bmp maybe over here um and that would give a lot more support I don't know where this, uh, where you are going, but uh, probably into the tree line over here would be my guess. But yeah, th once again, as you can see, this is sort of a new player problem is you sort of secure a foothold and then you don't really know what to do because you're not exactly good enough to make the push forward. So the AI just sort of you know, amasses more troops, you sort of amass more troops, and since you're not very good at the game yet, uh, nothing exactly happens, but that's why we keep playing the game, and as I said, that's why I love that replay mode for this game, because I can concentrate on trying to get better at this game, and then I can re-record the video with that replay later, giving you my thoughts, giving you basically an after action report of the battle and also seeing like how bad of a player I am and what I can do to improve. And that that to me is something as a gamer that is invaluable, seeing your own mistakes and in theory getting better from uh, learning from those mistakes. At least that's how I sort of view it, which is, you know, a sneaky nice thing about about doing this. Um, BTR-60 getting some nice auto cannon fire there and actually kills that Hilo. Obviously the Igla doing the majority of the work there, but uh, I do like the ability to take down Hilos at short range with the... I guess it's not even an auto cannon. 
just a heavy machine gun from the BTR-60. We've got Paras in the open. They might beat us there. We really need to move these guys forward. Uh, we are in the building, but the Paras a lot better than our Motostrelki. A lot better than them. We are in the building, but it doesn't really matter. So we need more forces moving forward. We do have an MI-24 moving up. This is the anti-tank variant, and we do have artillery punishing those guys in the open. However, we're about to lose our MI-24, and we are too late in dropping it. They do lose their Mirage, though, but unfortunately, they spotted the MI-24, and I didn't notice their aircraft until too, until too late, and I really need my A assets. Um, what, what you want to do, at least what I've seen better players than myself do, is you basically keep them out at all times, and let's say you draw a line about like here where you think they're safe from enemy AA fire and you just shift click them back and forth across this line so that way it's a lot easier to intercept and that way they don't drift into range of six different mistrolls which is absolutely horrible and it gets taken out so that's one thing I like about these videos too is you can see that I am a normal human being there's a lot of YouTubers that, you know, they do their after action reports and they sort of either expect perfection from the people that are playing these games or they expect perfection from themselves. And for me, I, I know I'm just not there yet, so I am perfectly fine seeing the mistakes that I make once again, as long as I correct those mistakes in the future or at least start attempting to correct it. So trying to keep my MI-24s back beyond their Mistral range, I think I've learned that the Mistral range is about where, where the airport ends, so keeping it a little bit further back. However, once my MI-24 blows its load, it needs to land and resupply. I think uh, many men can attest to that, you know. You need a little bit of a break and you need to hide during that break or, you know, maybe keep people happy during that break. But Puma's moving forward, you can see they're making the mistakes that I was making, just moving directly into anti-aircraft fire. However, I need more infantry over here, I need more tanks, I need to repair this BMP-1, it also needs to get back into the tree line. This BTR-60 is really damaged, so we need this logistics truck to either... Looks like, yeah, it needs to reload the conkers, come back, reload stuff over here, get them fixed up, but we're doing okay. This uh, 2A1-105 is doing some pretty good work, though. Uh, really, at this point, I should probably have artillery on counter battery fire. I've mentioned this before. I absolutely love the Akatsia. And if I'm pronouncing that wrong, let me know in the comments below. I do appreciate when people uh, correct me on pronunciation, as long as you're not pedantic about it. Um, please bear in mind there are many different languages out there, and those languages have different ways of pronouncing certain words and letters and things like that so for example English English versus American English is quite different and uh, I am well I'm English by birth but I am an American as I've lived here for 34 years so I, I definitely consider myself an American so I generally say things the American way every once in a while old habits do slip in as my parents are very very British and I will say something the British way but yeah as far as pronunciation if uh, if I say anything wrong let me know um, and I, I definitely appreciate that also I definitely appreciate any historical tidbits you give such as there was a American vehicle I forget the exact uh, terminology the Americans use because it is uh, they, they love their M1A2s for just about anything but essentially it was an M60 with a British howitzer on it and I could tell it was an M60 and I could tell it had a howitzer on it but I had no clue what the heck it was 
and uh, my good friend Bill let me know in the comments what exactly that vehicle was historically, which is an M60 with, I believe it was a British 90mm howitzer. I might be off on the exact uh, specifics for that weapon, but uh, it, it's designed to basically take out fortifications or entrenched infantry, which makes sense. Uh, that's generally what you do when you put a howitzer on a mobile vehicle is you're using it to take out enemy dug in placement. So you can see that my Akatsuya is getting counter batteried and I badly need to move it and I am unaware that it's being counter batteried. So this is thankfully they're not very accurate. I need to move that probably over here, get the supply truck over here. I also need this Akatsuya probably over here. I like having them spread out, but within the circle of the Ural. So what are we doing over here? Suicide run with the MiGs? Yep, one goes down, probably barely escaped. Uh, that was not worth it. I think I saw these gazelles and tried to take them out. And that gazelle is probably going to take out my T-80, except the Igla with an amazing snipe. And that MiG, well, this is an insane amount of AA assets from the enemy over here. Now, one thing I would like you to notice is the AI is moving some troops down this road. And I believe they go down this road over here and all the way to this base over here. This, um, this unit's in a terrible location really needs to be about there and I would have been able to spot it and would have probably been able to take out at least one or two of them with the what kind of weapon RPG 22 is what it has so that's something to keep in mind make sure that your recon is actually doing recon like things because my recon has no idea that this is happening over there which is really bad artillery doing some work, taking out the town, but once again, it's just a stalemate, and as I mentioned earlier, this is sort of what we'll call it a noob, noob problem here is you don't exactly know how to push. Nice hit on my Katsia was at 105s doing counter battery fire. Badly need to move these guys about, and you can see this is not very good. However, that Milan... Well, those sappers will make mincemeat of my Rosvedka. But if I could get that Milan with my Rosvedka, that would be absolutely amazing. That being said, I think I preemptively moved some troops over here. Because I thought, well, hey, what if the enemy does do a flanking maneuver? Uh, that would be pretty bad. Unfortunately, well, maybe the Sturm is actually moving up the road this way. So not great, but I do have one unit there. Once again, should probably be about there would be much, much better. But my Sturm saw them and missed. Oh, or was that my T-80BB? Sturm once again firing, but they've already dismounted. Hopefully by this point, I have noticed this. And you can see blob tactics from a newbie just throwing out Sapieri. Uh, no need to bring five in at a time. Um, could bring in like two. Well, really, Sapieri is not what I want to be bringing to defend this area because they're shock troops. Sapieri I need for the push over here. Really, we just need like a Panzergren. Move the Razvedka up to over here. Probably put an ATGM over here. And put something like, as I said, Panzer Grins over here, and we would be perfectly fine. Looks like I finally moved my artillery. I noticed that they were being counter batteried. Uh, I do recommend putting them on a hotkey. I do have mine on a hotkey. I'm just apparently not very good at noticing when they're being blasted. And I wasn't really doing counter battery fire myself, I was just trying to take out the enemy. Uh, this is a Puma that is about to go down. You'd hate to be those troops inside of it. Oh, but it landed? Maybe? It did land. So those air mobile troops will be able to get out. 
Uh, not exactly where I would want to be, but I think they're out of range of a lot of our firepower, so and they're doing all right. So these paras being absolutely annoying, hopefully I have recognized that they're there. I do have a Resvetka going out. I think I realize that they're, you know, moving troops over here. Looks like those paras destroyed my Resvetka over here, which is pretty bad. I have a command PMP1 right there, which is a horrible position for it. If if anybody saw that in the out in the open, they would absolutely destroy it. This Sturm really isn't in a good position either. Should probably be about there. And there probably goes my command. Oh, didn't go down, but it needs to smoke. I don't know if I have defensive smoke or I don't even know if this vehicle has smoke. Might have lost. Nope, that Milan 2. Another shot. Oh, but it was a, a failed hit, so getting rather lucky there. Once again, my artillery getting counter-batteried to all hell, and I am not moving it. You can see the AI now. I believe they have about three 105s, four 105s, uh, five 105s, so they're doing pretty well there. However, we're winning just barely, but as I said, need, need a push. Looks like I dropped some smoke over here. Really, the smoke screen needs to be more like over here. Uh, probably would have been safe to put a smoke screen here too. But the Sapieri should be moving into the airport and doing some damage. Hopefully this BMP-1 can protect them. We've got a T-80 BBK, which is command one up. Really need this Resvedka to move up into that building over there. Should have the BTR-60 push up. Should have Igloos pushing up with the Sapieri. Move the uh, Kubes there. Push this Kubes up a little bit further. Looks like we are going for an attack though, but it's very uncoordinated. You can tell that this is uh, probably my first rodeo when it comes to attacking as it is a very, very terrible attack. Uh, however, the infantry did get into airport so that is very good. And then the T-80 is moving up to capture that zone. While over here, not much of a push. But unfortunately, T-80 takes a hit from Milan. And I don't think it sees the Milan, which is a big problem. Needs to pop smoke. I think it just did. And it needs to get the heck out of dodge. Hopefully, it oh, it didn't cap in time. Uh, it needed to just move a little bit further back and then cap. So that was rather unfortunate. You can see this attack over here, absolutely disastrous. But moving up troops to, not, you know, somewhat take out angles of the enemy. This Milan, though, probably taking out my command tank. I think we got just out of range. But really what needs to happen is the Conkers needs to move up. The Motostrelki needs to move up. The Igla needs to move up. All of this stuff needs to move up. To support if all of our tanks were on this road and the infantry were further forward that would be one way of supporting an attack sapieri also need to move up in more than one group so it looks like they are about to move up this sapieri is damaged though so it should have stayed back these tanks over here doing a good job of annihilating a mistral team that decided it was going to uh, take on the Russian armor, not sure uh, what that was about, but looks like I'm doing what I said, just very slowly, very poorly, um, and unfortunately we have paras in our zone, and they're right behind our artillery, which would be absolutely horrible, and it looks like it is going to be horrible, because if they get a shot off with that, was this called an Apillas? I'm sure that's an acronym for whatever the French thing is, but if we lose this, that's a, that's a pretty big loss, and it looks like we are going to lose it, so I really need to protect my artillery assets, and they got a Milan 2 shot off, and I think I broke line of sight just at the right moment. This BTR-60 needs to take out this Milan, the Resvedka needs to 
probably move back. This Rosvetka in a terrible position, as I said, needs to be about there. But yeah, that's part of learning. So we lost Nakatsia. Absolutely horrible losing that um, to such a simple blanking maneuver. But that goes back to what I was talking about, about the AI in War and all. I don't know, as I said, if the AI actually gets better when you go from medium hard, very hard, and whatever the final difficulty is, which I haven't played yet. I know that they get more resources, but it does feel like the AI is pretty decent in this game. I mean, doing flanking maneuvers, it knows that there's nothing over here. There's battles that I'll show up with. Um, well, I don't, I don't think I'll show up the whole battle, but I was going to put together a little episode of, like, AI in Warna of things that it does well and Sir Jellybean and I in some of our games together learning against the AI we had some situations where the AI was really good at pushing areas that just didn't have adequate forces to hold them back and the, the AI sometimes is good at exploiting those other times that you know wants to move a Milan 2 up into an area where it has no protection. This BTR 60 is about to eat an ATGM. Oh, somehow did not die though. I love the love the models in this thing. Looks like I've got a grad strike. I believe that's a grad strike. Yep, BM21 grad. Not a bad one. We did force these troops out into the open, which is really nice. Uh, there is a seed aircraft. Hopefully my AA takes it out before it takes us out, which... Wow, that was a lot of misses. Holy cow. But we hit it hard enough to where it was unable to do its job. Looks like I got one Akatsia out of there, but we're really struggling over here. I think I finally realized I need to protect this flank and thankfully I am doing so because the AI sees a weakness and they're pushing it, which is something I really like about about this game. Now infantry out in the open, that's where BTR-60 is pretty good. Uh, T-80 BV moving up, this BV probably a little bit out on its own. These BMP-2s need to be supporting See, if we had these three T-80s there, and then like a BMP-2 in the trees here, and a BMP-2 back here, would be really good. Also need a supply truck. These T-80s are too close though, because one good aircraft strike might be able to take out both of them. But we are finally taking up this position. These T-80s all grouped up, not really sure what I was doing there, but probably need to move them over this ERC-90 getting pot shots on our AA assets not good whatsoever looks like we timed this perfectly maybe to repel this and then our lone piece of artillery doing its thing this grad is out this grad has man a, a grad shot right here would be devastating for the enemy, but I don't think I realized that. So these three T-80s, they need to move up probably in a supporting position because I only have two T-80s up here. I think I just lost one. But if they were to move up in a supporting position where they could, you know, take on the enemy as they moved in, that'd be really good. And thankfully I'm starting to move them because it looks like the enemy caught wind of where they are and you can see they got a nice 105 hit on one of them but we're just moving out Ooh, that igla just barely escaping death a uh ai realizes that i have actually secured this position i have secured it probably a little too well don't need all of this um as i said really a recon here, an ATGM here, and then it's a little bit too late, but recon over here with ATGMs would really put a thorn in their plans. Because right now, what they could do is they could amass stuff, get ERC-90s or ATGMs, 
and really damage me with a flanking attack. But thankfully, the AI not exactly that good. It would be cool if they were that good. I do understand the AI is really hard to the program, but I think this game does that the AI is probably good enough. I'm sure there are more veteran players that would absolutely disagree, but coming from games like Ultimate General American Revolution, Gates of Hell, holy cow, is that AI horrible? Um, other other games like Ultimate General or Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, um, even like U-Boat, that AI is, I mean, it's okay. It, it kind of does what it does. The, the destroyers, you know, search for your U-Boat and depth charge it but plenty of games have their problems with ai and i think anytime i don't know what this is doing anytime you're able to feel somewhat pressured by the enemy and you know have those moments where you go oh that was actually a good move by the ai i think that's a step in the right direction it does feel like the ai buys decent stuff the reason i Stop there was I saw that round coming straight for the Akatsia. Now I think my grad launchers actually doing a good job there. If they landed over here would have been a lot better. But we have a nice well We're planning on having a nice defensive position over there. At this point, you can tell I have no idea what to do. I've got way too many resources. I'm you know, mobbing up troops, or blobbing up troops. Uh, Grant Launcher, not exactly sure what it's shooting, and now we're getting counter-batteried. Really need to queue up the command of fire, then move. And really, they don't need to be in the trees. They can just be in this field back here. Uh, not necessary for them to be in the trees. These are not in the greatest positions, to be honest. They probably should move up a little but i think we're doing okay so my Razvedka taking on some paras and i realize they need help so btr 60 moving up and then this Razvedka moving up as i said if i had something to support them from the start it would be a lot better but growing pains growing pains while playing now the ai not really trying very hard to push forward. I don't think this will... Yeah, this definitely won't be a 2000 game because there's only two minutes left. But the AI needs to realize there's only two minutes left. It's going to lose. It needs to push pretty hard. I mean, it has Paris and buildings back here. Uh, this cluster bomb might be absolutely devastating and... Could have been worse, but still pretty bad, losing a T-80BV. My anti-aircraft assets, just nowhere to be found. They need to be, you know, in this tree line over here. They need to be much further forward because I'm very open to being destroyed. Now I have no idea what we're planning with that. That just seems like a bad, bad use of our sapieri, but somehow it's sort of working thankfully i've got t80s and bmp1s working in tandem however this milan 2 is in our rear and that doesn't look like it's going to go well for us however this btr 60 should be able to take it out because it's right up on it and that was nasty absolutely nasty and you can see lots of lots of deaths for us right here i think I actually don't know what I was thinking right there. Felt like a lot of things lost at the very end for no real reason. Really, we just need to secure this tree line, which we've done a decent job of. The grad strike really needed to go onto this building. Let's see where... Okay, there we go. That's pretty good. Maybe... Eh... Not really. Wasn't that great. Over here... AI, as I said... Red player really needs to take this section here would be a lot better than what I'm doing in blue player. They obviously want to take this section here that 
that building amazingly. But if Blue Player can take this part of town, taking that building, huge line of sight. It gives you, gives you a nice view of the battlefield. And that is the victory. So we go 2.23 to 1 kill ratio, not too bad. Um, really against the AI. Need to, <laughs> need to start curb stomping him. This Igla, however, holy moly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 kilos destroyed by this Igla. So that, uh, that guy gets some extra rations as long as he <laughs> didn't perish for the motherland. Conker's doing really well. This Conker's holy moly absolutely amazing i'm i'm a big fan of the conquerors big fan of the bmps obviously t80s are great once you learn how to use the air assets they're great i think that's probably one of the hardest things for newer players and that includes me i'm absolutely a noob at this game so far but i think using your air assets correctly is pretty difficult now how the heck did this Igla take out my own aircraft or helo? That's that's not good at all. But some very good kills. I also like to look at what gets the kills for my playstyle. And generally it is things like Iglas, T80s, BMPs, 1s and 2s. My MI-24s do okay, but I still have a problem of moving the moving them up too far or getting them taken out by enemy air assets. Magkatsi is not doing great. Probably should have put them on counter battery fire. Might have been a lot better. And then T-80s you can see doing well. More T-80 kills. And then on the enemy, uh, well... <laughs> we're we're going to look into this guy. He might have to go to... Uh, he might have to go to Siberia and the Gulag, so I'm not sure about him. He feels like an enemy of the state, and you can see, for the most part, the very good kills on our end. There was a little moment there where we lost a crap ton, and it, yeah, right there. Uh, I think that was that flanking maneuver. Was not good. That's way too many kills, and then there was another one right, yeah. Absolutely, that could be backbreaking that late into a game, like if the enemy was able to coordinate that with a push, but they uh, they were unable to do so. So that'll pretty much conclude it for this episode. Stay tuned for more battles. There'll be more you know skirmishes of me learning the game. There'll be some multiplayer games eventually. We'll get into army general and operations, but figured I'd just show off. And as I said, show off is not the correct terminology, but show the growth going from medium, hard, very hard, and learning the decks. Obviously, I've been playing the 39th uh, quite a bit. I really like them. I do have some where I play NATO forces, and I just find them to be a little bit more of a learning curve for me. Or uh, I, I think the problem is the T-80 is such an amazing tank in this game because it has the the ATGM that it can fire so in a long range duel the T80 generally wins whereas the short shorter range the uh leopards or leopards if you're German um they're really good up close the M1A1s uh challengers things like that they'll they'll win the closer up firefights but that ATGM from a distance really really makes the T80s powerful so that is it for today's episode. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of that YouTube jazz. And as always, guys, until next time.